So guys, we've just arrived at Shark Island. This little spot here is said to be one of the best dive spots and scuba spots in the Eastern Islands and the Gulf of Thailand. The day dive boats are already arriving with dozens of divers. You can see the white vessel bullseye to the frame. Also, just to the stern of the white dive vessel, you might just be able to make out Emily and Dylan. I'm keeping an eye on the boat for now, but I'll probably have a quick scuba before we head off to the next anchorage. Now, we've picked up a mooring boy. And you might be thinking, where is the mooring boy? Where is the mooring boy? So what we've actually done this time, guys, is we picked up a mooring boy and we've gone stern too. Uh, the reason for that is pretty simple because of the tidal current and the way Marley will swing on a mooring boy off the bow, it's better to go stern too onto the mooring boy. We initially hooked up on the port side and decided to move the mooring boy round onto the starboard side of Marley. This did, didn't involve us moving the boat at all. We just took the opportunity when the lines were loose to slip our line whilst attached to the mooring boy and just move it across to the starboard side. Simple as that. And I'd like to say a massive thanks to uh, Nick Hathaway from 45 Degree Sailing for teaching me that little hack. It's going to get a little bit noisy now because the dive boat that I showed you earlier is just coming round our port side. And I also need to keep a close eye on where Emily and Dylan are. The duty and responsibility of a skipper is tenfold. And your skipper's license means that you are ultimately responsible for the safety of your crew. And if circumstances get serious and serious injury or even loss of life is involved whilst you are skippering your yacht, you stand guilty as charged. Under UK law, you could be charged with accidental manslaughter or reckless manslaughter resulting in a lengthy term of imprisonment. Oh, the joys of sailing and oh, the joys of uh, owning a skipper's license. sticking up seems to be defying gravity. I also think it looks like a gorilla. What do you reckon guys? Take a look and leave a comment below.
welcome back to another day of sailing Thailand I'm on light provision duties today and we've just picked up a mooring boy two bays down from where we went to uh, dive in or scuba in this morning we're in uh, about three meters of water and that was about the nearest we could get to the beach the bay that we're in the water level drops away very very quickly and because of that I haven't even been able to take ribeye that's our rib rigid inflatable boat across so I've had to come across on the paddleboard and uh, it's quite an interesting place really I'm not quite sure where we are but uh, the 7-eleven which I was hoping to find is closed and I've been told that the next one is about one kilometer further up the road so I'm definitely getting my exercise in today uh, I've got a 35 litre backpack on with a wet bag or a dry bag and uh, I'm going to load it with as much stuff as I can and then strap it to the paddleboard and then paddle my way back it only took about 10 minutes to paddleboard across from Mali to the beach but I couldn't paddleboard right up to the beach because the water level was uh, even too low for the paddleboard the uh, the little fins or the keels on the paddleboard were catching in the sand but by the time I jumped off the paddleboard the water was ankle deep and bath water warm so it was beautiful so hopefully the next supermarket along is going to be open and I can do the light provision get some beers and some crisps and some essentials and then take a leisurely stroll back and paddleboard my way back to Mali I'll take some photos on uh, the way back on the paddleboard to Mali and I'll show you you can see the coal formations just unbelievable absolutely fantastic so I'll see you all later once I've done my provisioning Okay, left or right? Uh, I think it might be time to ask for some directions. So there we go guys, there's the basic provisions for the next few days. Uh, walking up the hill, a guy on a moped stopped and kindly gave me a lift to the 7-Eleven. Uh, I was half tempted to pay him a few Thai baht to hang around and then give me a lift back but I thought that might be a bit cheeky. Now I've got to try and get as much of this into there as possible and then I've got a 10 minute maybe 12 minute walk back to the paddleboard so uh, so far so good. Hasn't gone quite according to plan but uh, whatever does. Okay so I've got a 35 litre backpack full of Chang and two carrier bags full of bread, ham, crisps, cookies, Oreos, bananas, apples, mango juice and orange juice and just a few hundred metres back I managed to find Emily some fresh mangoes from a little street side shop that seemed to sell everything. Just gotta love a shop that sells everything. So I'm just making my way back now to Banok Bantau Beach which is where I'm hoping my paddleboard will still be. I have every faith. And then I need to load everything onto the paddleboard 
and paddle back to Mali. It's hot today though. Really, really hot. Chose the worst day to do. Let's go hiking for provisions. Hello. This is a cool place though. Banok Bantau. It's got a proper bohemian sort of hippie-ish feel to it. Proper like backpacker central. And strangely but not strangely, I feel comfortably at home here. I don't feel out of place or intimidated or nervous in any way shape or form I feel like I've been here for years hello again everyone's so friendly but I'm gonna have to spread the carrier bags over two hands now because my left arm is about to drag on the floor these bags are heavy as well. So I'll uh, see you all in a short while. When I get back to the paddleboard, I'll get loaded up and then I'll do my best to show you some footage on, uh, on the way back to Mali. I think the beach is just over there. Oh, that's a welcome sight. So out there in the distance is Marley. You can see the sailing vessel with the mast right of one of the dive boats. And let me just come down. You can see all the coral. I'm having to pick my way through here on the paddleboard. Everything's all strapped on. Just have a look. The water is like bath water. And to protect the coral, it looks like the Marine Association of Thailand have put netting over it. I'm not quite sure why. I'm guessing it's to protect it from maybe outboard motors. It's a great big chunk of coral just there. Just look at that. What a beautiful place to go shopping. And that's where I've come from. You can see the blue building, bullseye to the frame now. I got chatting to an English family who were fascinated by what we were doing. It reminded me not to take our blessings for granted even though today has been a pretty hot experience going to the shops I'd say it's better than going to Tesco's or Sainsbury's or Aldi or Lidl or Morrison's or Asda or wherever you shop anyway let's get back to Mali before the Chang goes cold or even warm I think the heat's getting to me time to go guys Matt out Monday morning, 7.50 a.m. We are leaving Thonet Bay, Shark Bay, and Shark Island behind. The beautiful places we visited on Koh Tao. And we start our passage back to Koh Panyang. Weather conditions are fair. And once we're out in the open stretch, we should be able to get the sails up and sail our way back to our next anchorage. Bon voyage, my friends. Having left Koh Tao bright and early this morning, 
we managed to motor, then motor sail, then sail. Then we decided to drop the sails completely and motor around the headland to this delightful anchorage which we've been to before. Uh, I'll pretend it's a name I can't remember, but actually it's a name I can't pronounce, if I'm honest with you guys. But uh, no mooring boys in this little bay, I'm guessing because of the coral. So we'll be dropping anchor. Uh, Emily is on the helm, she'll take us into about four metres of water. And we'll probably drop out 25 to 30 metres of chain, just to be on the safe side. It's a sandy, sort of muddy clay bottom here, so we get a good hold. And uh, for the technical sailors watching, we are heading equidistant between the white marker boy and a fisherman's flag. And then we will line the stern with the white boy, which is just sort of left of frame now. And that's when we'll drop anchor, when the stern is in line with the white boy. That will give us a little bit of pullback on the chain and that will give us about 20 to 30 meters of swing as well even if the chain does drag once the anchor itself is set in so uh, uh i'm going to be called upon now guys to man the windlass and um yeah we'll catch up with you all a little bit later and one of our traditions when we arrive at an anchorage and we know that the anchor and the chain is well set is to launch ourselves off the bow of the boat. Kind of, a bit like this. Are you loving that? Yeah. I never knew you were into swinging. <laughs> Now you've got to jump off. Okay, wait 